Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. The following are actually real headlines that were in newspapers across the United States. Here are two of my very favorite. Number one, if strike isn't settled quickly, it may last a while. <laughs> and here's my very favorite. Think about this. War dims hope for peace. <laughs> Those are newspaper headlines. Boy, the proofreader really was doing his job, wasn't he? Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Oh, God bless America. Thank you very much to Kate Smith, and good morning, everybody. I don't know what happened a few minutes ago, but we were dead in the water, and we've got everything running now. Hopefully, it'll stay that way on this Tuesday, September 22nd. And uh, we're brought to you by, of course, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. 734 6969 and Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida, and Rupert, everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch at Valley Wide Home and Ranch. Right now, let's get a Pledge of Allegiance person on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, my friend. Give us the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Dal. God bless you and your lovely wife. Thanks for calling in. Okay. All right. God bless you, man. Thanks. Hey, it is time for the weather, and the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Oh, my goodness sakes, they've got so many things going on over there, all their carpet. Check out all the carpet, own the home decor items, and, of course, they can provide all the kitchen construction and, of course, the flooring, whatever you need to make your house a home, and all the newly refurbished furniture. Two Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. And right now, here's the weather. Here's your weather for this Tuesday, September 22nd. Absolutely beautiful. Looks like this high-pressure system is going to be sticking around at least until we get to the weekend. Sunny skies for today, high of 84. Tonight, low of 50. Tomorrow, pretty much the same as today. Sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 48. Back up to 86 for Thursday. Friday, possible high of 87. 85 for Saturday and could be dipping down into the upper 70s for Sunday. Sunset tonight is at 732. That's your weather for Zebra. The oh, there you go. The weather forecast brought to you every morning when we start this program off by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Hey, don't forget on Thursdays, it's the Burley Livestock Sale Yard Sale of the Week. You better believe it. Starting at 1030 in the morning, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for consignment information and sale information, 6789411. Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy, the sale that does work for you. Burley Livestock Sale Yard, Thursday sale day at 1030. Oh, good morning. Give us a call tonight at 630 at the Fine Arts Center in Twin Falls CSI Campus, the Refugee Forum, and I urge everyone to be in attendance. 
I urge everyone to be in attendance because answers have to be given. I have a feeling, and I'm just going to say this is my own personal opinion. If I'm proven wrong, I will apologize. I've got big shoulders. I can take it. Uh, I think this is going to be a real hard sell of acceptance for the CSI campus and uh, also the Times News. I think they're trying to do everything they can in a time and at a time that the refugee program coming into this United States is extremely critical, extremely dangerous, and volatile. And I think that CSI and the Times News, they have to use this method tonight, this meeting tonight, as nothing more than a selling forum to get you to believe that all is okay on the Western Front. I want you to, and I urge you to be there because I think you'll call me tomorrow and agree. Calls are welcome, 436 2241 866 927 4587. Don't forget Idaho's number one choice for wireless internet, 18 years and counting, and that's SafeLink Internet. Number to call and get on the program, 677 8000. 677 8000. You be sure and give them a jingle today. First month free, no contracts, no credit checks, unlimited data. They are there to serve you. SafeLink Internet, 677 8,000. Hopefully I'm going to have time today to run into Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. I've got a bag full of Wranglers and sports shirts and all kinds of clothes in there that need to be cleaned and pressed. I'll tell you, they do a great job. And dry cleaning prolongs the life of your garments. So take care of them. Good heavens, they cost you an arm and a leg. Take them to Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. They are absolutely the best. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. If you are just waking up this morning and didn't have a chance to follow any of the news yesterday, let us inform you that Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin has dropped out of the presidential race. And I will say this, even though that is my former home state, I thought that Scott Walker did it in a not very professional way. And I mean that. I think he treated himself as some sort of a martyr for the cause, and said that others should quit too, and uh, they should try to put the best and most conservatives to the forefront to dump Trump. All this is doing, I think, is putting the political party in complete disarray. And what it's showing to me, and I'd like you to respond to this, that um, if we don't get the right player, if we don't have the right team members... We will do all we can to ostracize them and get them kicked off the team and clean your locker out and leave and don't come back. That's kind of the attitude I'm getting from the Republican Party right now. Dump Trump. And, quite frankly, in a roundabout way, without mentioning Trump's name, Scott Walker blamed Trump for his quitting. Now, the Republicans, as I said, are in total disarray. And we, the people, are suffering from their stupidity. I honestly believe that, and I'd like to have your thoughts on this. They don't like Trump. They don't like what he has to say. They don't like the way he says it. They don't like his persona. They don't like Trump. But where is the right for them to discern who can run for president and who can't? And if the numbers are there for his polling... And he's at the top of the pile. Doesn't it sound just like sour grapes? That's the problem with the Republican Party today. Call me and let me know if you think you agree or disagree. I can take it. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They open the doors at 730 in the morning till 5 Monday through Friday. And as we know, next week we may see a change in this weather. The old thermometer may go down and it might start to get chilly in the morning well maybe you'd better check out your furnace filters and get a case of 12 right there at ramsey heating and electric your furnace can run efficiently and keep your toesies warm in the morning and thanks to ramsey heating and electric 
2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Waiting for your call. Come on. Do you agree or disagree about Scott Walker and Trump? Dump Trump. Uh, Denny's Restaurant. We are going. I want everybody to listen. I know last week we had some people that were there way early, like a week. Uh, Denny's Restaurant Lunch Bunch is this Thursday. And we want to say thanks to Stokes Food Center, Handsome Mortuary, Walmart, Smith's Food and Drug for all the gift certificates and drawing prizes that we're going to have. Oh, it is going to be fun at 611 Overland in Burley. And they've got so many great things on the menu. Oh, I love that. All you can eat pancakes. You're going to love that. I love pancakes. Denny's Restaurant. Great breakfast, dinner, and lunch. And you stop in and see them today. Two locations, 611 Overland in Burley and 291 Pole Line in Twin Falls. Denny's Restaurant. Good morning, caller. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm good. What can I do? Well, look who's out of bed. <laughs> yeah, just barely. Yeah, what's cooking, man? <laughs> oh, this, the media and the political BS that's going on. The Republicans are upset with Trump. Yeah. Well, the American people are upset with the Republicans. We, They promised they'd do a job, and they campaigned on doing a job. We put them in there. And they kowtowed. No, they not only kowtowed, they just absolutely laid down and put welcome all over their bodies so they could be used as doormats. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so, and they wonder why we're not supporting the establishment Republican, the Republican they want to put in the office, because... They, they don't do what the people want. Well, you know, Doug, here's the thing, and caller number two, don't hang up. I'll be with you in a minute. Here's the thing about the Republicans. As a sole entity, and I don't care if it's Rich or Crapo or whomever it is, I don't care where across the country they come from, as a sole entity, they will say, oh, I did this, and I did... I don't give a darn about the I. I want the we. I want a congregation of these Republicans to stand up and say, enough is enough. Exactly, and they and if they do do what they're going to say, they don't have to go around saying I did this. There you go. That. There you go. You can see what they do. You know, and for Scott Walker to say, well, we got to get rid of Trump, and uh, he's going to turn himself into a martyr for the. You know what? He's a liar for saying that because his poll numbers have gone through the toilet, and that's not Trump's fault. That's his fault. He's not getting out for the good of the American people. He's getting out because he doesn't have any more money. Not only that, but he didn't have the support. You've got to have the recognition in the polls. You've got to use those numbers to wave those papers in front of those proposed people that want to contribute millions of dollars. He didn't have it. No, he didn't. And and for them, to, the media, to go after Carson for what he said. Oh. They go after Trump for what he said, too, about Obama. I yeah. mean... My gosh, aren't we in America? Well, we can voice our opinion. Your question speech. right there, stop right there. You said it best. Aren't we in America? Put a question mark behind that and an exclamation point because sometimes in the last couple of months I'm beginning to wonder. Right. And you know, where it offends people that, you know, say Carson said that and it offended a few people. Okay. It offends me when they do what they do. Absolutely. I mean, so why can't they kowtow to me? Why can't they bow down and do what I, you know, just so it won't offend me? Uh, Doug, it doesn't work that way. The liberal left has now permeated itself almost into the supposedly conservative right. Yes, and one more quick deal. The, those movie stars that are willing to give up 90%. Oh, brother. You, was you watching... Uh, uh, Fox and Friends. Yeah, you know as well as I do, that is such a total lie. Did you hear what O'Reilly called him out on? No, uh, I didn't hear that part. No, I'm sorry. Well, O'Reilly was on this morning, and he says, okay, he says, if you guys want to donate 90%, you know, for that, that's fine. Put it in escrow. Let's put it there, put it in escrow, and if he doesn't make it in office... Then we'll take that money and put it to charities for wounded warriors and all sorts of good stuff. Oh, I'll bet that one over like a lead balloon. <laughs> I can't wait to see what 
comes about that one. I agree. Doug, it's always good to hear from you. Hope things are going well. Young man. All right, thank you. Keep on keeping on. All right, buddy. Hey, caller number two, I ask your patience. I've got to get this in. I want to tell everybody about Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Oh, they've got all the clothing for the winter. Sure, you know they've got the warm coats. You know they've got the warm vests. You know they've got the warm gloves. You know that they've got all the ladies and children clothing. You know that they've got all the feed for your livestock. You know that they've got a great hunting and fishing department. Don't you? Well, you do now. It's all over there at Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Wonderful local people serving you. And service is the key word at Valley Wide Home and Ranch. Everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Caller, thank you for your patience. You're welcome, Jim. Go ahead, sir. Scott Walker, I really liked him in the beginning, and I still like him. But the way he exited this thing remind me of kids in a marble game, and you're losing, and you get mad, and you just leave, and you want to destroy as many other people you can along the way this crossed you. Yep, yep. Yeah, I agree with you. It was a spoiled, bratish attitude. And they had Lindsey Graham on this morning, like he was <laughs> a front runner or something. <laughs> Telling about, you know, all these crap that he doesn't know anything about. Yeah. And, he, you know, he isn't... He isn't even in the top ten. You know, Keith, I chuckled while you were saying that because I watched that interview and I thought, this is the most ridiculous atmosphere that could be portrayed by the Republicans because they're giving credence to a guy that luckily, luckily, if he swept all the shavings off the floor, he might have 1% of the vote for the Republicans in Iowa. He's absolutely not going to make it to the presidency. He's an absolute waste of time. And he's the one doing all the criticizing and telling Ben Carson he should get out of the race? you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, I think the one thing that has destroyed Scott Walker this time is his lack of foreign policy, and it really showed. I agree with you. i got another call waiting, and it's always good to hear from you, Keith. Thank you so much okay. for your call. God bless you. Yeah. Hey, caller number two, stand by. I'll be right there. Don't forget this weekend on Saturday, it's the great big 97th annual Old Settlers Dinner at the Rupert Elks Lodge, Saturday, September 26th, starting at 12 noon with the dinner, and it's going to be great with all the fixings and cobbler for dessert, $15 tax and tip included. Get your tickets. Call Gary Shoresman, 436-3982 for reservations, and the program this year is going to feature the life and times of Artie Tyler, featuring his son, Bob Tyler. <laughs> That'll be fun at the 97th annual Old Settlers Dinner. Call her. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Uh, calling about that Muslim fellow that criticized uh, Dr. Carson. Uh, oh, yeah. People like him aren't here to uh, assimilate and become Americans. They're here to conquer us. Well, you know, okay, now stop right there. There are those, and I'm not playing the other side, Tony, so don't get mad at me. I'm just saying this. There are those that would say to you, oh, yeah, you're just prejudiced. Oh, yeah, you're just hateful. And I would say back to them, wait a minute. Their doctrines and their ideology is never going to blend in here with America because if they follow their doctrines and their ideology, they don't like us. They don't like our lifestyle. They don't like this country. They don't like the way it's set up. They don't like our Constitution. And they would love to impose Sharia law and have the Muslim flag flying over the White House. That's not me saying it. That's one of their own imams saying that on ABC News as much as a year ago. Oh, that's right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that guy can hop on a boat and leave this country. Well, why He's take not the boat? Any good for us? They just conquerors. Yeah. No, I'm very, very concerned as to what's going on. And what Ben Carson said, hold on just a minute. What Ben Carson said, he said nothing wrong. He answered a question regarding possible Muslim presidency in this country, and he said that he could not support that. He still has the right of his own opinion. Just because he's running for president, he doesn't have to kowtow to the party rules and regulations. I support what he said. 
Well, the Constitution gives us certain rights. Absolutely. Rights that you can't take away from us. Under Sharia law, you have no rights. The only thing you get there is the knife in the throat. There you go, Tony. I'm not going to argue with you, my friend. You got it all figured out. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Okay. All right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, I need your opinion, your valued opinion. No. oh the steel at CSI tonight, is there any use going to that? Because they ain't going to let you ask any questions or anything. They're just going to tell you what they're going to do, right? You know, I, I had a lot of people call me yesterday on my cell phone and ask exactly the same thing that you just mentioned. What good is it going to do to go to that meeting? Well, I think there's two things. Number one, knowledge of what they're trying to sell us is very important. I think we need to know what they're trying to say. We need to know how they're trying to say it. We need to know what they're trying to do. We need to hear from these principles because every time somebody opens their mouth tonight, they're going to be giving information that we can keep and file 13, 14, whatever, and revert back to it. The other thing is, I think people should show up in numbers and let the college know that what they're doing is not acceptable in this community, or for that matter, almost any community. Yeah, that's a, a bunch of us are going to go down there from Burley and Rupert or Sikkim Group and show our support. Would you do me a favor? Our support for them. W would you do me a favor, please? <laughs> I want you to do me a favor, please, and I mean this seriously. Uh, I've got some uh, medical problems that I have to address later this afternoon, and I certainly hope that I will be able to be in attendance at that meeting. However, if I don't make it, I will rely on you and others to call me and let me know what happened tonight at that meeting. Would you do that for me? Yes, I'd be be happy to it's just i don't know there's two questions i would just love to ask and have answered one of them is, is how does this benefit us as a community because they're all going to be in my opinion on welfare and everything and the other question i'd love to have answered but i'd like to have somebody answer me if i ask how much money are you guys making off of this program? Because you guys got to be making a ton of money doing this. Both those questions need to be answered, and I can help you with the first one. I know from people that I've talked to back east that are involved with this program and overseeing this program that with the hundreds of thousands of refugees that Obama wants to bring in, it is absolutely going to be a punch to the gut of our welfare system in this country. In other words, those people working are going to end up taking the blunt of it. You've got it, sir. <laughs> God bless you for your call. You're always welcome. Thank you very much. You have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, caller, I'll be right with you. Don't go away. Mount Harrison Audiology with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup. Oh, this lady knows hearing. She knows ears. I mean, <laughs> this lady is fantastic, and she can help you with the hearing screening so that you can hear what you're missing. That's right. There's a lot of medications that might affect your your hearing and maybe you should go in and discuss your different medications talk to her and then find out exactly where you stand with the medications and also with the hearing screening and maybe a good way to help enhance your hearing she can help at mount harrison audiology and she's right across from the minidoka hospital emergency room and you stop in or give her a call today at 312-0957 mount harrison audiology and hearing aids call her thank you for your patience god bless you're on the air uh, good morning Zeb. i need you to speak up please question. okay Could you please tell me how the Republicans are going to get Hillary in office as president if they clean up their act. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You said, uh, I want to make sure I understand your verbiage. You said the Republicans are going to put Hillary in office if they don't clean up their act. Is that correct? You, you better know it. I agree with you. I don't they, see... They've got to get their heads on their, right in their body. Yeah. They Helen, you're scaring me again. Problems. You're scaring me again, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I do that real good, don't I? No, seriously, and I want to make sure that we're not being facetious about this. The Republican Party and Mike Crapo is due to call in an hour from now. And that's one of the things I'm going to mention to him. I think the Republican Party is, in some instances, making fools out of themselves. Well, they're doing everything they can to put Hillary in office. I agree. 
And that would be the time of my life when I'm going to start looking at property in Canada. I will not abide by a President Clinton administration. Well, the day that you hook up your little old wheelie trailer door, you better have a place for me because I'm going with you. Helen, wait for the invitation, would you? <laughs> no. No way. I'm not on the, the ride. I've got my pat leg up and something going just to go on. Oh, God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I love that lady. She is something else. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Really? Come on. Come on. Speak out. What did Dr. Ben Carson say that was wrong? He answered a question regarding a possible Muslim president. And he said he could not support that. Well, I can't either. And I'll wager that most of you out in Radio Land that have read, studied, and understand what's going on in the world today, you can't either. The Council on American-Islamic Relations, CARE, oh, they came out yesterday and they denounced Dr. Ben Carson. Oh, they said that he has to quit, he can't run for president. How dare they tell us, or how dare they tell him that he can't run for president? He has every right to answer a question that was posed to him from the media. He has a right to answer it in an honest and very sincere way. You do, I do, everybody does. When we have to fall into lockstep of thinking, oh, that might offend somebody. Ooh, that might not get me votes. Ooh, somebody might get mad at me. What kind of a country are we living in? Now, There are those in the audience that absolutely can't stand my attitude. That's fine. I'm not going to change my attitude for them. But I'm going to be as honest and I'm going to be as appraising of what's going on in the news as possible. If that offends somebody, listen to a station that plays oldies with Barry Manilow. I've said that before and I'll say it again. We have every right to speak out. Every right to speak out. And Dr. Ben Carson, whether I support him or not, that's irrelevant. He has every right to answer the question in the fashion that he wanted to. Calls are welcome. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Don't forget for all your equipment needs, all your equipment needs, it's Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, they've got the equipment to get the job done right. And they've got three locations, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. These guys and gals at Barry's, I mean, they know equipment. They know how to run the equipment. You can stop in if you're buying or leasing and test drive it right there. Learn all the ins and outs. I mean, they are good, good people. To get the job done right, it's Barry Equipment and Rental. And their store hours, Monday through Friday, 730 to 530. Saturdays, 8 to 5. Barry Equipment and Rental in Twin Falls, Jerome and Burley. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Just think for a moment. Just think for a moment. Pause. Stop. Close your eyes. Don't do that if you're driving. Just close one. Okay? Uh, To get a Muslim president elected in this country. Oh, what a nice guy. Oh, what a great American. Oh, possibly a wolf in sheep's clothing. Stand by, caller. And with that wolf being in sheep's clothing, after he gets elected, possibly a complete implementation of Sharia law and a complete annihilation of our Constitution and also possibly the Christian faith. Don't laugh at me. It's very possible. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, 
Gazette this morning, Scott Walker was on there and he was saying that to all of these Republican people, you know, that are running for president, to join him and get beat Donald Trump. What is the matter with these people, the front runners? They're crazy. They're all bought and paid for, except the forerunner. Well, your, your last line there, they're all bought and paid for. I totally agree with you. They owe their soul to the company store, just like the old Tennessee Ernie Ford song, and that's exactly what happens. When they get the big checks from the big donors, they adhere to what they say. They're kind of like in lockstep. Oh, yeah, you want me to say this? Oh, yeah, you want me to be here? Oh, yeah, we'll do this. Trump isn't like that. Now, I'm not advocating Donald Trump when I say this, but he's not taking money from anybody. He's going to shoot from the hip and shoot from the lip. He's going to say what he wants, and that's the way politics should be, should it not? Yeah, because they're going to just hand this to Hillary. That's that's crazy. Well, and just think for a minute, caller, if you, at the beginning of 2017, had to look at the television set and see, sitting in the Oval Office, Hillary Clinton. I don't know about you, but that turns my backbone into a chunk of ice. I am very scared. You know, there you say you... You uh, move to Canada, we'll have to because this will be Russia or whatever. Well, I am so concerned about this election, and I am so teed off. You know, i got to be honest with you. You know me personally anyway. Uh, being a cowboy and thinking sometimes in cowboy ease, in other words, some of the language that we use, i got to be real careful when I talk about this mess that I don't slip up and stand by the corral and say the wrong thing. Yeah, me too, Zeb. Thank you. God bless you, man. Thanks. This is very concerning to me. And, and I just don't see the Republicans getting their foot out of this cattle guard. They're stuck. They're stuck. Oh, calls are welcome, 436-2244. I want to tell you about what Lieutenant Colonel Alan West said this morning. Okay? About the refugees coming into this country. Gee, I hope CSI is listening. Gee, I hope the Times News is listening. Oh, golly, wouldn't that be wonderful? Stand by. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, get back to feeling like you. After I get this doggone problem looked at tonight with my rotator cuff or whatever, I'm going down there and let them rehabilitate me. Holy smokes, help me, boys! They've got a great group of uh, ladies and gentlemen that are physical therapists, and they know their business. They can help you get back to being you. Exercises, sports medicine, hydrotherapy pool. Yep, yep, yep. You better get a hold of them today. Call the number for an appointment. 678-1191. 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Allen West on the program this morning. And he said very bluntly and very succinctly, the cost to us, the citizens of the United States of America, for bringing in possibly over 200,000 refugees will be devastating. Now, think about it. They will absolutely blow the social welfare system sky high. You know as well as I do that all these people, all the children, all the grannies and the grampies that are coming in, they're not going to be contributing members to our society. No, they are not, and don't tell me that they will be. They are going to have to have housing. They are going to have to be a major part of increasing the infrastructure. They are going to have to have money. They're going to have to have food. Oh, ho, ho, wait a minute. I got it figured out. They're going to be taking benefits from you and I. I hope CSI and Times News can write a story about that and tell me how wrong I am. Please, I beg of you, do that. 
Our social security system, our welfare system, everything is just sitting up on a wooden post right now, waiting for somebody to take a shotgun and blow that son of a gun full of holes. And it's going to happen. They will be, and mark my words on this, it's not just me talking, it's also experts. The refugees coming in here, hundreds of thousands, are going to be eligible for all benefits. Does that scare you a little bit? It does me too. And I don't need you bleeding heart liberals out there going, Oh, you're a mean man. You're not a Christian. How dare you? I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to take care of myself. And you say that by watching out for my family and others that are taxpayers and they've worked hard all their life here in this country and they're trying to pay their bills, they're trying to pay their mortgage, they're trying to pay their pharmacy for all their medical bills, they're trying to take care of themselves, that they all of a sudden are bad people because they don't want everybody else being a leech on the system. How dare you? Calls welcome, 436 2244 Isn't that going to be great? Think about it. Maybe not this year. Maybe not next year. Maybe not in maybe three years. But all of a sudden, those of us that are a little gray on the top of the head and a little long in the tooth, go to the mailbox. And our Social Security money that we paid into, not there. Oh, my. What's the telephone number, Goober, of that office? Well, I'll go look it up. You call and they say, well, I'm sorry. But with the influx of people and such a demand on the system, Mr. Bell, tough. No more money. What about those that need the help for their medical needs? I mean, really honestly need it. What about our veterans? Why should they take less and possibly nothing? Because of this influx of people that absolutely are going to tear apart the system. Call me. Well, right now it's time for the weather, and uh, we want to say thank you to Mad River Laser at 502 E Street in Rupert. Oh my goodness sakes, they can do uh, they can make all the signs for you to hold up at the football teams games. Yo, team, go! Oops, touchdown! And uh, then they can make the jerseys with the name of your favorite player and the number and everything. Holy smokes, they can do everything over there at Mad River Laser, and they got a great gift shop over there too. Stop in and just browse. You're going to love the people. You're going to love what they have at Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. Here now, the weather. Here's your weather for this Tuesday, September 22nd. Absolutely beautiful. Looks like this high-pressure system is going to be sticking around at least until we get to the weekend. Sunny skies for today, high of 84. Tonight, low of 50. Tomorrow, pretty much the same as today. Sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 48. Back up to 86 for Thursday, Friday. Possible high of 87. 85 for Saturday and could be dipping down into the upper 70s for Sunday. Sunset tonight is at 7.32. That's your weather for Zeta. At the uh, thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody by Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert, right on the square. You stop over and see them today. You know, maybe you're not concerned about this. I am. I mean, I re- I love this country. I love this country, the United States of America. I have been everywhere in this country. I've been to the East Coast. I've been to the South. I've been to the West and I've been to the North. I know I've got friends that live in almost every state of this union. I feel very comfortable that when I travel, I can stop in and say, Howdy! I don't want to see this country torn apart. I don't want to see this country turned into a major refugee center, bringing in all of those from other lands that should have stayed and fought for their own lands, or we should have helped them fight for their own lands. We cannot take 
everybody. We can't. You'll never convince me that we can take in everybody and treat them equal to us. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Um, you know, Zeb, um, Talk to me. Talk to me, caller. Go. I this country, too. And we can't support any more of this influx of um, refugees. And uh, CSI is not helping any. No. No, absolutely not. They're not helping any. What good? Tell me. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot here, sir. I want you to tell me one plus, one absolute plus, one benefit that's going to be derived from welcoming these people into our culture. Go ahead. You got the floor. There's not one. I can't think of one. So why are we doing this? The only plus I can see is a plus for them, and they're wanting to implement Sharia law. There are those that would snicker at what you just said and say, oh, they're never going to implement Sharia law. What's the matter with you? And I would say back to them, okay, wait a minute. What happened in Arizona? What happened in New Jersey? What happened in other parts of the country where law had to be amplified in certain court cases and those that were of Islam beliefs and ideology, they said, no, we want Sharia law. There is a push to move it into this country and into our court system. So don't be laughed at. Tell it like it is. I agree with you. There is not one benefit. True. And, you know, look what happened to Detroit. They came into Detroit, and now Detroit has Sharia zones and uh, different things. And that's going to happen here. You know, I'm a bus driver. I drive through Minidoka County, and when these people come in, uh, I'm going to have to take them to school. I'm going to have to drive them to school, and they're going to want special rules and regulations, uh, you know. And that's not going to happen on my part. The, I already said that. The speculation of what could happen, and again, I, I want to be really cautious here. I think you'll understand why. We can speculate on the negativity that may happen, but we already know many of the facts of what the refugee problem is causing. With this influx of thousands and thousands and thousands of people running out of their country, first of all, we don't know any information about them. There's no vetting, and don't let CSI or Times News tell you there is. There is not. And then the filtering into our system and our culture. Well, first of all, I don't think any of them ever knew what a pair of cowboy boots and a western hat was before or a rope and saddle and here they are in a western culture and you have to somewhat feel sorry for them up to the extent that they're going to be in our culture they want their culture and we're going to have clashes not only that but when you start talking about our welfare system and our benefit system going down the drain and all of us that have paid into it suffer this is ludicrous you're right. It is. It is ludicrous. God but bless this is the government that we have today. Yep, you're very true. Not that I am happy with it. Well, I'm not either. Believe me. Thank I you mean, very. You know, I grew up in the '70s and '80s, and it's a totally different way of thinking than um, now than what it was. Back then. Amen. Thank you very much for your call and drive safely, my friend. Thank you very much. You're welcome. God, God bless you. Day. Thank you. Calls welcome. 436 2244 1 927 4587. I think back, call or stand by. I think back to my dear friend, and she is my dear friend, Brigitte Gabriel. And Brigitte's been on my program many, many times. She has the uh, group called Act Now for America. She's very outspoken about not allowing this to happen with the refugees and the Muslims coming into this country en masse. 
And I think back to all that she's warned us about over the last couple of years on this program, and she's been 110% right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, Zeb, I hope I'm not covering ground that you've already covered. I've been very busy, and I haven't had a chance to listen this morning, but uh, 89% of the refugees coming from Syria are Muslim. Yeah, we've talked about that, Randy. We have talked about that, but here's the deal. I don't care I, I don't care what their religious background is. Honestly, draw the line right there. I want to talk to you about this. I don't care what their religious background is. I don't. I don't care if they're Buddhist, I don't care whatever. But when they come in here en masse into this country, and like Lieutenant Colonel Alan West said, our benefit and welfare social systems are going to be blown out of the saddle because the money's not there, and everybody that has benefits coming as taxpayers in this country, they may be subjected to severe cutbacks or no money at all. Randy, this is stupid. Well, it's just like I say, you know, if we kill this golden egg, this golden chicken that lays the golden eggs. I don't know that we're ever going to have another one not like this one. I agree. And that we've got to maintain it, and this means that we've got to get up as free people and do something I beg of you. Hey, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay, here we go. There are those listening in the audience right now that are going to say, Zeb Bell, you're very, very selfish. Randy, you're very, very selfish. And I would say this. You know what? I've worked hard all my life for what I have and the benefits for which I can get back to me. And if I work hard and I have a savings account and I do receive back some of the money that I put into a certain federal system, then I, in turn, can help others by contributing to various causes, whether it's the Senior Center, or whether it's the Heart Foundation, whether it's the Diabetes Foundation, whatever. But when you take and break everybody to the point where they're subservient to a government, what have you got except people that are dependent with their hands out, Randy? Well, people that are broke and, and, and literally broke spiritually and broke monetarily can do nothing for anybody. Uh, welfare is a luxury to a point. And if you really want to save the poor people of this country and save this environment, you've got to have people that are upright and mobile and have some money. Amen. Amen. Randy, thank you for your call as always. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take No, I tell you what, you know, they can come and say, oh, well, you're not very caring. Yes, I am caring. But you can't help people if you can't help yourselves. Think about it. All right, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Let's talk a little bit about batteries today. Oh, I'm telling you, you go out and turn the key in these colder mornings that are looming around the corner, and your key goes far to the right, and all of a sudden you go, hmm... What's the matter here? Well, maybe you'd better get in with your four-wheeled wonder to any one of the seven Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers today and get your battery checked. And then if you need a new one, you'll be ready to take the cold weather and punch it in the nose. I'll tell you what. They've got the best batteries and front-end alignments and shocks and struts and the best in brake service. And as you know, the very best in tires. Oh, my. They've got all the tires for all your kind of driving. Stop in today to your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. The best. I don't know, folks. Uh, this election, the status of this country, where we may be in the next 486 days with Obama still in office. Where we're going to be with the next president. Good Lord help us. I have no idea who that's going to be, but I have my fears. This country is kind of teetering on the edge of a cliff right now. It's kind of like having a brand new pair of boots on. Brand spanking new. 
and you got your heels over the edge, and the slippery soles have not been scuffed up enough to give you any traction. That's where we're at right now. You're going to take a step forward and might slip and fall. And if you go backward, you go down into the abyss. That's kind of where we're at, like wearing a new pair of boots. I am absolutely worried about Christianity. I'm absolutely worried about this, the greatest constitution that has ever been written by any country in the world. And I'm worried about us, Americans. I'm worried that we're all going to be denigrated and knocked down so low that we can't help others because we can't even help ourselves. I'm really worried. And this meeting tonight at CSI, it just grates on my nerves. Because that refugee center is going to be doing nothing but selling the concept of more people, oh, more of a different culture into our culture that might eat up our culture and our money, and then none of us will survive. I'm going to take a little break and be back in about six minutes. Don't go away. You've been listening to Zeb Bell and Zeb at the Ranch. Make sure you're hearing everything. Contact Mount Harrison Audiology for a hearing screening. Call 312-0957. Wheels, take it away. Oh, i got to get right into it this morning. I know the first hour we were talking about the fiasco, and that's a good word to use when you talk about the refugee system and all that this government is going to try to do to increase the numbers. And we're going to be talking more about that this half hour with my dear friend Frosty Woldridge in just a few moments. Don't forget, welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers. Valleywide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch. And our friends at Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Don't forget that, locally owned and operated and serving you. And don't forget they've got dumpsters in various sizes. Clean out that garage. Clean out that barn. Clean out the, clean out my office. Holy smokes, I could use a big dumpster for that. Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. Wonderful people serving you. Also want to remind you that uh, don't forget Denny's Restaurant. Mm-hmm. 611 Overland and Burley, and on Thursday we're going to have the Denny's High School Game of the Week where you can pick the winning team and the closest to the final score of that game, and you may win a delicious Grand Slam breakfast from Denny's at 611 Overland in Burley. And this week we're going to be featuring the game between Oakley and Glens Ferry, and we're going to be telling you more about that later on. And Denny's Restaurant, also this Thursday, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Uh, don't forget to Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our dear friend Joel Heward, the manager, his family, his staff, and giving you and your family all the attention that's needed to take care of a situation when there's the passing of a loved one. They are always there with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call them today for more information, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Rupert. Right now, I am honored to have one of my dearest friends on the program this morning, and that's, of course, Frosty Woldridge from Golden, Colorado. Frosty, good morning, my dear sir. Well, good morning, and it's always a pleasure to be with you, Zeb, and uh, 
Yes, sir. We've got some uh, we've got some business to get down to for the American people. So let's bring it. Well, Frosty, uh, we're in the middle of a real situation here in this country to where we're seeing a denigration of our lifestyles in this country. We're seeing a denigration of our benefit programs. We're seeing a denigration of our uh, welfare systems because we're bringing in people and giving them full benefits to those that are American citizens that have paid into the system, quote unquote all their lives and we're seeing a tearing down of our civilization and basically we can't help anybody anymore because we are needing help ourselves this is what's happening with the imposition of this refugee system in america that's correct we are at such a pivotal point and you've been you and i've been talking about it for the last 10 years and and warning america and now uh, it's really getting down to a major crisis level. Uh, I understand from my research right now that Idaho is about to be injected with 5,000 Muslim refugee immigrants, uh, according to the John Kerry plan, but also the main plan uh, that Washington has been feeding America with 100,000 legal Muslim immigrants uh, each year. Uh, we're now somewhere between four and seven million Muslims. These Muslims, as they go into every country in Europe, in Canada, and certainly in Australia, there was just riots in Sydney, Australia just this past week. Uh, they start demanding, then they start rioting, then they start forcing their Sharia law uh, and studies for Islam into the school systems. That's happening right now in Texas. It is absolutely happening in Detroit, Michigan, and it is happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And they are pernicious, they are determined, and they are growing in numbers. Uh, if you really want to understand how fast it's happening, and I can tell you this, Everything will change in Idaho with 5,000 Muslim immigrant refugees. Everything. First of all, they're going to get free food, free housing. You'll be working for them. Your daily wages will be paying for them to do nothing. And I want you to understand this. In Germany right now, all of the Turkish Muslims that are there... 80% are on welfare. That just came out over the wire. 80% of Muslims, and year and, and decade after decade, they simply ride the welfare rolls. Well, the same thing is happening here. The Somali Muslims in Wisconsin and certainly in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, are all literally riding the welfare rolls because they have no skills, they have no English skills, they have no technical skills, they don't have any skills other than driving a taxi. And so I, I want you all, each person this morning, to understand that everything is going to change. This is going to change America. It's going to literally take America, as Ann Coulter wrote in her brilliant book, Adios America, the left's plan for uh, turning America into a third world hellhole, if you want to know exactly how fast this is happening, it's called www.refugeeresettlementwatch.org. Refugeeresettlementwatch, all one word, dot org. Anne Corcoran is a woman who is literally, I'm going to write a national column on her. She is really keeping up on what's happening. And that website, join it for free and you will find out exactly what's happening to your country and how fast it's coming in. Well, you know, and Frosty, you can name this lady Ann Corcoran. I can sit here and say that I listened diligently this morning to Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Here's a man that I respect, a man that has served his country, both politically and in the military. Here's a man that said that the cost to us 
for bringing in over 200,000 refugees, Muslim refugees from Syria in the next two years is going to be devastating. He said it will absolutely blow the social welfare system sky high and take the benefits away from the American taxpayers. And these people are going to come into our shores and automatically, here's something really to be afraid of, automatically qualify for benefits that you and I have paid for. That's exactly correct. And you have to understand this. Our country, every one of us, because of the Congress and the last five presidents, we all stand 18 trillion. That number is so incredible, 18 trillion dollars in debt. We pay well over 600 million dollars off our backs every day to serve the interest on that debt right now. And the Heritage Foundation said that if we allow any kind of an amnesty, the, mil the, the minimum cost will be about $3 trillion and as high as $6 trillion, depending on how much and how many uh, of these illegal alien migrants uh, get citizenship. Yeah. And frankly, if you don't understand economics, you're going to understand this. You and then your children and then your children's children are going to be paying for this $18 trillion debt, but at some point, just like if you overcharge your credit card uh, and you go off your limit and you don't pay, and you don't pay the minimum, the credit card company is going to cancel you. Our country is going to get canceled financially if this thing continues. That's how serious this thing is. So whatever you can do. and. Go to uh, newswithviews.com. My latest column, my latest column, is the most dangerous, the most, the, the most, the deadliest, the most violent religion on planet Earth, Islam. You'll see my picture at the top. It's now published today, and not only will we break ourselves financially, but Islam will absolutely, if all of these Muslim immigrants get into this country will absolutely tear apart communities, start forcing Sharia law, and all of us are in jeopardy because of that. Hey, let me ask you this. You know, I'm not advocating Dr. Ben Carson over any other candidate right now, but I am saying this. What Dr. Ben Carson said the other day in answering a question, a direct question from a news commentator in regards to a possible Muslim president here in this United States. And he said, and I'm paraphrasing, that he could not support that. Well, I can't either. And I'll tell you something, now the Council on American-Islamic Relations, along with the White House, along with the White House spokesman Josh Ernest, they are all coming out and condemning Dr. Ben Carson for saying he couldn't support a Muslim president. And to top it all off, Lindsey Graham, a snake in the grass for the Republican Party, is demanding that he draw out of the race. What is the matter with these people? Well, what you're seeing right now, Lindsey Graham is worse than a snake in the grass. And, and certainly, uh, I mean, Carson was right on the money. I have said this in my columns. If uh, the 535 uh, congressional seats were uh, filled and elected with Muslims and with Obama as a Muslim president, it, within one week, those... 535 Muslims in our Congress would completely nullify the U.S. Constitution, vote it out, and vote Sharia law in. That is a guaranteed fact. I will stand by that because Muslims have to absolutely stand with the Koran and the Koran states to convert or kill all non-believers. That's you and me. That's everybody listening out there in the audience right now. And. The fact is, Obama would sign the bill, and we would no longer have a U.S. Constitution or a constitutional republic. What that also means is there would be no women's rights. There would be no free speech. There would be no choice of marriage made. There would be no gay rights. There would be no ability to literally choose uh, anything because uh, you no longer would have a free society. In other words, there would no longer be a free America. It would be a Sharia law dominated America. That's how serious this situation is because Muslims are pernicious, they're determined, and they don't care how long it takes. And as their numbers rise, 
they take more and more into hand and they literally overcome countries you're looking at it happen right now in france certainly in sweden certainly in norway and all of europe to tell you the truth well here look at it this way let's just forget for a moment whether it's muslims or whether it has anything to do with a religion or ideology let's just look at the plane load after plane load after plane load of what obama wants to bring into this country as refugees right now this year possibly eighty five thousand or more next year possibly one hundred thousand or more and and totaling possibly very near to 250,000, a quarter of a million. Now, that's being brought in in an organized fashion. But then, my dear friend, to the south of us, the unmitigated gall of leaving our borders so porous, we have no idea how many numbers are coming in. We are being overrun, my friend, Mr. Woldridge. We certainly are. As a matter of fact, if you'll go online, you can verify CNN came out with a new report that the Mexican invasion of our country went up 251 percent, 251 percent just in August. Now, what is the numbers? Uh, FAIR, uh, www.fairfairus.org, uh, Federation for American Immigration Reform, stated in a column that on average 500,000 to 700,000 illegal aliens come up through Mexico every single year. And that's because there is no border stopping them, there's no border patrol stopping them. That's because uh, Mr. Obama has shut down any enforcement of our immigration laws, both at the border and internally. So this is an invasion, and it's being orchestrated by men like Harry Reid, uh, women like uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, and uh, right on down the line, uh, John McCain, you, you, Schumer, uh, Levin, uh, Hatch, uh, Feinstein, Boxer, all of the big guns are doing absolutely nothing. The two uh, senators from Idaho are not standing up for Idaho. They're not saying a thing about this. They're not doing anything. Same with, with Colorado. We are being legally invaded and illegally invaded because our elected officials will not enforce the laws of the land, Zeb. You don't have to preach to me, my friend, because you and I are in the same choir. I'll guarantee you I am so upset that the United States of America is no longer a melting pot. We're no longer melting into the same culture. We're no longer melting into the same vision, the same quest for greatness. We're absolutely being inundated by people that want to impose their cultures on us and change and transitionalize away from our Constitution. I don't know about you. And I do know about you because you're as scared as I am. This is extremely troubling for me. It is more than troubling. We are on the verge, literally, I, I, I can say this point blank, we're on the verge of losing our country and, 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 there, and, and it's, no one seems to understand the implications of it. Uh, and, and honest to gosh, I don't know what any of you think right now about about uh, the Donald Trump, but he may be the last great hope for us. Because I, I, I want to, I want to share this. Uh, you know, I want to read this a quote out of my latest uh, column that's in the NewsWithViews.com. The Koran dictates convert or kill all non-believers. Point blank reality for America and all Western countries. Any culture that will not defend itself against multiculturalism guarantees its own suicide. That includes both time-tested and successful cultures, like ours, or weak cultures, like Holland. Embracing diversity assures cultural suicide. America's multicultural path guarantees its destruction via cultural clashes and conflict, such as Islam, Mexican, and African cultures that diametrically oppose American culture. The more diverse a country, the more destructive and broken down its future. The more people, the more it destroys its quality of life and standard of living. The more immigrants, the more destruction to its environment, the more it imports every refugees, the faster America will lose its ability to function. Exponential growth of any civilization cannot be sustained 
it leads to ultimate collapse. Absolutely. 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 I can't make it any clearer. You know, we have always been, and I know you, and I know you contribute, I know you help, I know you want to come to assistance of people, you're a good Christian person. I feel I am the same way. But, if all of a sudden... Frosty Woldridge and Zeb Bell are taken under financially without receiving the benefits and or the paychecks or the jobs or whatever that we've worked hard for all our lives. We become the same leeches on the system. And a country that can't help themselves is subservient to any ruler that wants to make us do what they want us to do. That's exactly correct. And let me make this point. Look to Saudi Arabia, look to all of the, uh, the Qatar, uh, look to all of those people that we've defended. We, you know, we, we went over there and, and defended uh, uh, against uh, Saddam Hussein years ago when he was trying to take over, I forget the country. But anyway, none of those countries, or rich countries, is taking in one single Muslim immigrant. Saudi Arabia hasn't brought in one single immigrant. Yet they are, as Ann Corcoran says, and in, in the Resettlement Watch, uh, you know, website, these immigrants going into to Europe are seeding, uh, uh, literally seeding all of Germany, all of Europe, with Muslims who then, at some point, will be so disruptive you're going to see internal war. I don't. I I can guarantee you this. Within five years or less. Uh, I can see massive riots going on in in, uh, in Europe and all of the countries where those Muslims have simply become so great that they literally strike fear into everybody, and that's what's headed toward us right now. I see in my little crystal ball more of what's happening in Dearborn, Michigan. I see more of what's happening with the recruits for ISIS coming out of a major metropolitan city like Minneapolis, Minnesota. I see more conflagration within the confines of this country to the point where fear is going to dominate walking down the streets. I am very concerned about what's happening, Frosty, and the local college, the College of Southern Idaho, and the local newspaper, the Times News, are advocates of bringing them in. Let's help them. Oh, yes, we're going to create more of a refugee center with fervor. I think this is complete lunacy. Well, those college elites always live in gated communities, and they, it's called cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance, an intellectual denial of reality. And as long as they can sit in their academic towers and sit behind their beautiful desks, the rest of us have to deal in each community where these Muslim immigrants come in or, you know, any kind of immigrant. We've got to pay for them. We've got to tolerate them. They don't speak English. They have no idea what the Constitution means. They're simply getting a free ride, and it's all being mandated by Washington, D.C., and none of those people will ever have to be part of the nightmare that they're creating in the cities across America. You wait. We get When these Muslims start getting over 10 million in this country and then into the 20 million range, the entire republic will not survive this. I urge every one of you listening today, uh, again, uh, the Refugee Watch, you, you need to get to that and start writing and talking and speaking, calling your two senators, calling your house rep, but you've got to get involved. CapsWeb.org, NumbersUSA.org, FAIR, F-A-I-R-U-S.org, join for free. Start talking, writing, and getting involved because... This invasion is going to get, I mean, it's, it's already at 1.2 million per year legal refugee immigrants every year. Now we're going to get a quarter of a million Muslim immigrants. That will lead to more. We're going to have more fracturing. Our country will be more fragmented. Uh, Zeb, we have got to uh, keep Americans and the American way of life, or we're simply going to become a third world country struggling with water with uh, sociological issues that we will not be able to solve except violence is going to be the only way to solve it and it's not going to be us it's going to be the immigrants because that's what muslims do well all i can say is prayer 
prayer is needed because cooler heads and more educated minds have to prevail over this very dire situation. Frosty, the hour, the half hour went way too fast. God bless you. Thank you for being on the program, and I will definitely look forward to next Monday. Or, pardon me, yes, sir, next I'm Tuesday. Next week with you, Zeb, and Godspeed and God bless. Thank you, Frosty Woolridge, every Tuesday right here on Zeb at the Ranch. We have got a major problem, and yet. We're told by the hierarchy, oh, we have nothing to fear. Yeah. Don't forget Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and Hayburn, where the fun is sold. What do you mean, sell fun? Yes, sir, they've got great rebates yet on Suzuki 4x4s. You know, get out and enjoy the great outdoors. We did last weekend, and oh, God, did make a beautiful state of Idaho. Enjoy it. Yes, sir, stop in and check out the Suzuki 4x4s at Let's Ride. And don't forget they've got the new timber sled snow bikes. <laughs> You know we're going to be having some angel dandruff on the hills, so enjoy winter. You better believe it. Stop in to Let's Ride. Great service department, great accessory department. They've got it all for you where the fun is sold. Let's ride. You stop in and see them today. Hey, by the way, great event coming up this Saturday. Don't forget, it's the 97th annual Old Settlers Dinner. It's going to be at the Rupert Elks Lodge in Rupert at dinner is 12 noon. Turkey dinner with all the fixins. It's only $15 tax and tip for a ticket. And the program that starts at 1 p.m. is going to be the life and times of Artie Tyler featuring his son, Bob Tyler. This is going to be a cowboy story. You don't want to miss this. For more information and reservations, call Gary Shoresman at 436-3982. Now, we are waiting patiently for... Idaho, United States Senator from Idaho, Mike Crapo, to be calling in. And Wheels is going to let us know the minute he does call in. However, I am limited on time again this morning. I apologize for that. We've only got about 10 minutes or so, so we're not going to take any outside calls. I'm going to be talking to him about some very pertinent subject information this morning, and hopefully he'll be calling in in just a moment. Don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance. When you think about life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more with the professionals. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Very, very dedicated and devoted to helping you. Call them for an appointment today to find out more to make sure you're protected. 436-4424. 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Please do that today. I want to also remind you, too, that we are blessed. I'm uh, kind of catching up a little bit on some of my commercials here real quick as we wait for United States Senator Mike Crapo. Uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric, offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems, whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, a heat pump, whatever your family and you will enjoy the comfort. All you have to do is call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric can save you money. I love that. And don't forget at Ramsey's with Lennox, they sell warm winters and cool summers. Absolutely. I heard him clear his throat, and that's a good indication that perhaps our senator is on the line. Right, Wheels? Yes, sir, he is. I appreciate that. Thank you, young man. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, with us on the phone, and I always look forward to reserving some time to visit with our United States Senator from Idaho, Mike Crapo. Mike, good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing well. Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. (laughs) Don't worry about that. Mike, I'm going to get right to the crux of some very important issues, and some of which maybe you will or won't agree with me on. Uh, I absolutely am fighting, fighting the College of Southern Idaho and the Times News indoctrination for us to accept with unlimited numbers the refugee program coming into this country with refugees, Muslim refugees, coming in from Syria. I think it's absolutely going to hurt America. I think it's going to be devastating to our state. What are your thoughts? Well, Zeb, I think the concerns you're raising are understandable. Let me, let me approach it from this perspective. 
Um, the United States needs to have an effective, and I want to emphasize targeted and limited, refugee program. <clears throat> this is a program that is aimed at our own national interests to protect those who uh, put their lives on the line to defend our country, like the, you know, the folks in Iraq who save our soldiers and they'll provide intelligence to our soldiers and then whose families and themselves personally are jeopardized. Those kinds of situations uh, are the kinds of situations in which we need to be able to provide asylum uh, to, the, to those who, uh, who face those kinds of difficulties. And I just use that as an example. That being said, uh, right now we are facing a situation in which the refugee program in the United States is being dramatically expanded by the president. And he's doing it, by the way, in agreement with uh, the United Nations. Uh, which is an alarm, frankly. I, d <clears throat> I don't think that the United Nations should be the entity which determines the scope and size of the United States refugee program. Uh, yet it is the United Nations that has determined uh, what numbers to ask the United States to take and, and who should be in that pool. And uh, who says the United States should take half of all of the refugees they've identified that need to be uh, moved around the world? And. Um, and the United States has not agreed to that yet, although it appears that the president is moving significantly in that direction. And we don't have the ability to adequately vet those who are now being proposed to be brought over. Um, there is the entire question of what kind of an expense or cost it will be in terms of which government programs and benefits will be uh, provided. And, uh, and I think the list goes on in terms of just needing to be sure that we adequately evaluate what is being proposed and operate a refugee program that is intended to benefit the interests of the United States. The last thing I'll say is uh, um, I also believe that instead of having this come from the top down like the United Nations telling the United States uh, what the pool of refugees is, uh, ultimately the local community, as you just referenced, the, local, the people in the local community should have a strong say about uh, refugee programs that are being implemented in their communities. All right, the next question I got, and I know we have limited time with you this morning. I want to get in, and I, I want to compliment you, and I mean this, Mike, because I know that you stood up on the Senate floor, and you let your colleagues know what an asinine, stupid deal the Iranian nuclear deal was and how devastating and dangerous it could be for the future. But it went through anyway. I want to know what's in there. I I want to know what all the hidden perks are. Did you get a chance to read it? Do you know what's in it? Because I'm afraid for my family and America. <clears throat> well, actually, the answer is yes and no. We did get to read the actual uh, joint powers agreement that was entered between the United States and Iran, and, and this also included Russia, China, uh, England, France, and Germany. But uh, there were side agreements, which were key agreements to the so-called enforcement and uh, assurance that, uh, that Iran was not going to be able to have access to nuclear material and nuclear weapons, which were turned over to the United Nations. And this was an outrage. I mean, <clears throat> let me just remind you that, that uh, I sit on the committee that drafted the sanctions legislation that brought Iran to the negotiating table. We had done this three or four times, and we had a fourth, fourth, uh, fourth or fifth version that we were ready to move, and the president, whose party controlled the Congress when he did this, said, don't move this legislation, I don't want to offend the Iranians. So we did not bring it, and when the president did that, he promised that he would not enter into any agreement that did not stop Iran from ever having a nuclear weapon, and that was not so enforceable that we would have ironclad verification. Well, the agreement allows Iran to have a nuclear weapon over time, and the, uh, the enforcement is totally turned over to the United Nations, and we don't know what their enforcement provisions are. We are learning that those enforcement provisions might actually even prohibit the United Nations inspectors from going on site and allow the Iranians to provide their own samples and their own photographs. Well, Mike, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can the president do this? Now, tell me if I'm wrong, but I've read the Constitution a couple of times. Isn't Congress supposed to know everything that goes on with any treaties or security deals prior to any passing? Why didn't Congress know all the ins and outs and the loopholes? It's going against the Constitution. The president does not have that power. 
He does not. And in fact, the agreement, the, the legislation we were able to get through, and, and this is another whole story, it was limited legislation, it required on this specific agreement that all of the documents had to be provided to Congress, and the president simply ignored it. Um, and the bottom line is, we tried, as you, I'm sure you know, we tried three separate times to, to defeat a filibuster to bring the bill up and reject it on that basis, on the basis that they had not provided the documents, if anything else. And, uh, and we failed to get it. I, as you referenced when I stood on the floor of the Senate, when I was on the floor of the Senate, I pointed out that 98 senators voted to require the president to produce all the documents and to give us a chance to vote on it. And 42 of them refused to even allow us to move to a vote. Why isn't this document null and void, though, Mike? I hate to keep pursuing this point, but if he stepped out of bounds on the Constitution, and we've got the law, and we've got the constitutional value, why isn't somebody as a group, the Republican Party, demanding that this man have this thing rescinded? It should never go into effect. I'm certain that that will be tried, and of course it will take a court to make that ruling, but I'm confident that that court challenge will happen. Uh, the president is taking the position, and I'm not trying to say he's right here, I'm just telling you his position. He's taking the position that this is not a treaty, it is just an executive agreement, and as an executive agreement, it is subject to whatever legislation can make it through Congress in regular business, meaning a filibuster and a veto. If it had been a treaty, it would have been it would have required 67 votes in order to be valid he set it up so that it took 67 votes to make it invalid to stop it and uh, i think that will be litigated uh, one aspect of that though is that the way the president has set this up the next president of the united states can totally ignore it or invalidate it on his own uh, because this president has refused to involve Congress and has refused to follow our constitutional procedures for this kind of an agreement. And I hate to keep beating a dead dog here on the back porch, but I'll tell you something, Mike. I don't think that our hostages, led by Pastor Abedini, will ever see the shores of America again because we don't have the backbone to demand of that country, Iran, to let them go. Well, I hope that you're wrong about the fact that we'll never get them back, but you're absolutely right that we had a shot here. And you'll recall I mentioned earlier that when the, we were pushing another round of legislation and the president came to us and said, don't run it because I'll lose my leverage. At that time, I disagreed with that, but did not have the ability since I was not the chairman of the committee and the chairman was from his party. So I said at that time, if you're going to do this, if you're going to pull back our legislation and negotiate, then you should at least insist that the Iranians free Pastor Abedini and the other three political prisoners as their show of good faith. If you're saying we have to sh make a showing of good faith and pull back this legislation, then they should have shown good faith and been required to release the prisoners. And, of course, the president refused to do so. Mike, I don't know how much time we've got left with you. Tell me if you have to break and run, but I do have one other question. And in regards to the Republican Party itself, my goodness, they seem to be in total disarray. Scott Walker dropped out, blamed Trump that he was leaving the race. I mean, it always seems like it's blaming somebody else. When are they going to stand up on their hind feet and take responsibility for their own actions? Well, I guess I do disagree with you a little bit on that one. Um, I've never been one who has worried about the fact that we were going to have a bunch of uh, candidates or, uh, and non potential nominees running in our primary. I know that a lot of Republicans have been wringing their hands and saying, oh, man, there's too many running and we're going to chew each other up. Um, I actually think that we've got a deep bench of strong candidates and uh, although I have some preferences over others, uh, the bottom line is I think that you're seeing a strong, robust debate out there. And, uh, and this fight that you referenced, I think, is an indication that Republicans are fighting, that they are engaged. I can tell you we are here in Congress. I know we get blamed a lot in Congress for not getting things done, and that's certainly legitimate. But the, the reason isn't because the fight's not on. The reason is not because we're not pushing the fight. The reason is because we need a couple more votes. We were two votes short of stopping this agreement in the Senate. 
elections have consequences. I'm excited that we're in another election, and I hope the American people are paying attention. I like your fire this morning, Senator. Thank you very much for taking the time and effort to be on our program. Don't make yourself a stranger, because you know me. I'll have some questions to fire right back at you. Thank you so much. I hear it. I hear you, and I look forward to it. All right, United <laughs> States Senator Mike Crapo, and I appreciate his really good direct answers this morning. Thank you very, very much. Much. Good. And we'll take some calls. Give me a jingle, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Holy cow, I think while I'm waiting for your calls that I know are coming in, are coming in is, hmm, I hope they're plural. Anyway, we're going to have the weather forecast right now, brought to you by Duck Uglies, 163 West Highway 30 in Burley. Oh. Oh my, if you're hungry, that's a great place to take the entire family for a delicious meal. All oh, that ribeye they've got over there, fantabulous. And don't forget, too, they got great entertainment. Oh, picking and grinning while you're enjoying a great meal. It's all there at Duck Uglies. Here now is the weather. Here's your weather for this Tuesday, September 22nd. Absolutely beautiful. Looks like this high-pressure system is going to be sticking around at least until we get to the weekend. Sunny skies for today, high of 84. Tonight, low of 50. Tomorrow, pretty much the same as today. Sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 48. Back up to 86 for Thursday, Friday. Possible high of 87. 85 for Saturday and could be dipping down into the upper 70s for Sunday. Sunset tonight is at 732. That's your weather for Zeta. At the ah, good weather forecast, Gene. A beautiful day outside. Brought to you by Duck Uglies, 163 West Highway 30 in Burley. Great food, family entertainment at Duck Uglies. Don't you miss it. Woo! Give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what you have to say this morning, so give us a jingle on the landline. Did you hear, it was on the news earlier this morning, and I want to comment on this a little bit. Um, a pharmaceutical company back east was making a cancer-fighting pill... And they were selling it for $13.50 a tablet. I heard this earlier this morning and I was outraged. Okay? Well, this company sold the rights to that pill and the rights to their company to a bigger company. And the new CEO looked at the production costs, looked at the sale cost and basically said, no, no, we're not going to sell that cancer-fighting pill for $13.50 a pill. We're going to sell it for $750 a pill. $750 a pill. Oh, and when interviewed, this great entrepreneur CEO said well we have to make a profit from thirteen dollars and fifty cents a pill that's even expensive at that rate to help people maybe live and maintain through the dreaded disease cancer to this new business with this new CEO that I would I'd publicly say I'd like to knock him right on his keister, they raised the pill to $750 a pill. Where's the justification for that? Where is the humanity in that? God help them. 1350 to 750 bucks. The lives that will be lost fighting dreaded cancer purely because of money. Makes me sick. Absolutely makes me sick. Calls welcome 436 2244 1866 927 4587. 
Ruggy Auctions. Oh, Cade and the crew, I'm telling you, they're going to have a ripping good auction coming up on Saturday, October 3rd, and it's the Hollinger Liquidation Sale at 3800 North, 4000 East of Hanson, starting at 11 a.m. sharp. Don't miss this sale. Lunch will be served on the grounds. Holy buckets, they are going to have all kinds of good tractors. They're going to have all kinds of good farm machinery. They're going to have guns. They're going to have everything over there that you don't want to miss this. This is a great sale. And it's the Hollinger Liquidation Sale at 3800 North, 4000 East of Hanson, 11 o'clock sharp on Saturday, October 3rd. Managed by Roggy Auctions. Absolutely the best. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927. Four five eight seven. I'd like to hear what you have to say this morning in uh, regards to any of our stories. Did you hear that later on this afternoon, the Pope will leave Cuba and fly to New York City? Okay, and he's going to go to New York City, and he's going to be in Philadelphia, and he's also going to be in Washington, D.C. Well, the biggest security ever has been planned for the Pope to go and visit the United States. But now they've got a new wrinkle to worry about. You know what that new wrinkle is? That many of the cops, many of the policemen, and many of the firefighters, their uniforms may be fake. That's right, fake. And they're worried that terrorists have donned the uniform of the police and the firemen and will be infiltrated in the crowd. I'm not making this up. I heard about this earlier this morning. And it's a very, very serious story. And uh, I know that many of the terror experts are absolutely tearing their hair out trying to figure out how to protect the Pope and his entourage as they go through the three cities on the East Coast. Very, very serious. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Come on, give me a jingle on the landline and we'll talk about this or any other subject matter that you want. You want a a story that is going to really make your blood pressure rise when it comes to the idiocy of the politically correct crowd? Now listen to this one, okay? There is a restaurant, a Mexican restaurant in Charlotte, North Carolina. Been there for years and years and years. Well, outside the door, and I've seen this caricature, I've seen it. Outside the front door of the, of the restaurant, sitting on the steps, taking a little siesta at this Mexican restaurant is a little bitty Mexican sitting down on like on the ground with his knees up and his uh, sombrero down over his eyes and he's taking a little nap. Oh, oh, that's terrible. That's racist. What? Yeah. Some people now are going around the country And they're checking on restaurants. They're checking on different businesses. And they're saying, wow, you can't have that little storefront mannequin or whatever. Why, that's racist. And they're demanding that this Mexican restaurant get rid of immediately that little bitty Mexican wearing his sombrero and kind of sitting in the sun after he enjoyed the noonday meal. What are your thoughts about this absolute in- idiocy? You know, if I was that restaurant owner, I would just look them in the eye and dare them. Dare them through any means whatever to try to take away a portion of their business and their advertising that they've used for many, many years. What would you do? Would you all of a sudden say, oh, I'm so sorry your feelings are hurt. We'll take it down immediately. Or would you just spit in their eye and tell them to take a long walk off a very short pier? What would you do? 
Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for you to tell me how you'd like to throw political correctness into the ocean, uh, I'll do this. Hey, don't forget Scow's Car Quest Auto and Truck Parts. Uh, Scow's Incorporated in Rupert, Hayburn, and Burley since 1949. Every detail matters. Parts, sales, and service in taking care of your vehicles. Absolutely. You know, now's the time to be preparing for the cold weather. Yeah, buddy. Don't forget to get all those liquids in your vehicles checked to make sure that you're not going to freeze up in the cold winter days ahead. And don't forget, too, that they've got the fleet surveys, yes sirree, Bobby, where they, like farmers, have 10, 12, whatever trucks for harvest. All you have to do is get that fleet survey lined up so they can know that if you're trouble with truck number three, they can just look it up on the computer and help you. All of this and more with three locations of Scow's CarQuest Auto and Truck Parts in Rupert, Burley, and Hayburn. Remember the best, Scow's CarQuest, serving you. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. You know, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can own. There's no business that you can be the head of that no matter what you do for your advertising, I don't care if it's a Mexican restaurant, I don't care if it's a clothing store. I don't care if it's any kind of business whatsoever. No matter what you do or no matter how you advertise or whatever, somebody is going to find offense with whatever you do and try to shut you down. Seriously. And it's time to stand up and say, (laughs) no, I can't say that on the radio, but it's time to say enough. You don't like it? That's your problem. We're going to keep on doing it this way. I will never be politically correct. If my logo for my business offends somebody, that's fine. I couldn't care less. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. Where did this political correctness crap come from? Well, it came from the liberals. It started back in about the early 90s to the point where they wanted to make sure that Christmas was a thing of the past. They wanted to make sure that we all said things that didn't offend them. They wanted to make sure that we were a unisex society and we didn't say postman or mailman. Why, they wanted to clean everything up. They want to be in complete control, my dear Lorna. What's the matter with you? Well, did this start in our government? Did it... Where did it come from? A lot of it did. A lot of it did because the government was trying to be the be-all, catch-all, demand-all from our society. Yes, it did. And I think it's now time to stand up and say, come and get me because I'm not going to adhere to your foolishness. I think it is, too. I think it was a long time ago. You know, what do you do? Let me ask you a question, Lorna, and be really honest about this. What do you do during the course of a day that might offend somebody to the point where they say, Why, Lorna, my dear, you're not politically correct. You've got to stop that. Well, right now I can't think of anything. I can. I can think of one thing right now. You know what it is? What? Listening to me. That's not politically correct. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to always be politically incorrect then. That a girl. Love you. Thanks for your call, Lorna. Take care. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. Yeah, listening to me might get you in a whole heap of trouble. (laughs) That's good. Stand up and be counted. You know, spit in their eye. Just say, hey, go sit in the corner with the dog. And if that gets boring, just go outside and and take a walk. And if you forget where you are, just keep walking. I am so sick and tired of this political correctness. Somebody might be offended. Gee, too bad. What do I hear in the background? Good morning, caller. You're on the air. 
Good morning, sir. Yes, real fast. I've only got 30 seconds. Oh, I, I was just going to say that um, I'm pretty sure that it'll get to the point where if you even do one body gesture, then it will become racist. Uh, don't go into any body gestures on this program. We are only going to talk about verbal jousting and not body gestures. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> God bless you, man. Hey, Wheels, thank you. I appreciate you chiming in. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and then Dr. History is going to come in. And if anybody's not politically correct, it's Dr. History. And we'll tell you more in a few minutes. Don't go away. God bless. You're listening to Zeb at the Ranch. Make sure you're hearing everything. Contact Mount Harrison Audiology for a hearing screening. Call 312-0957. Here's the news. Oh, my goodness sakes. Time to get back in the saddle and ride for another hour. Welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with our great uh, advertisers like Western Waste Services, always at your disposal, and, of course, Valleywide Home and Ranch. Everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You know, it's time to take a look and see what the Chadwick Sports Grill is going to have on the menu today. Oh, pork enchiladas served with Spanish rice and super salad today. Pork enchiladas at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. Great menu choices. Really nice people at the Chadwick in Burley. And pork enchiladas today for the special. Stop in and enjoy. Real quick, I also want to remind you that on Thursdays we have a segment called School Days in Cache County, and it's brought to you by Two great businesses, and we sincerely say thank you to them. A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. And, of course, everything for the family, all the baby gifts and gift wrapping is free. And also, for your surgery needs, call and save money at the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue. Number to call, 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and A Child's World bringing you school days in Cache County. Right now, one of my favorite segments, God bless him, he is a super individual, and he's heard now in 110 countries, and they have not yet filed for a dissolution of their uh, uh, United Nations status with uh, the UN and the United States. They like us. Imagine that. And it's brought to you by Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, Zach, and the rest of the crew with everything you need to to refurbish your home and also the tartar gates and panels for your farm and ranch. And right now, here is Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How's my friend? I'm great. Last week, in our weekly serial of everything that went on in the Old West, we were talking about cowboys. Yes, and if you want to ruin your lunch, go ahead and listen to last week's uh, show. Uh, what about this week's show? Uh, not too bad. You, oh. You'll be able to eat after this okay. one. Yeah, well, you never really did discuss about the food and the hygiene and everything last week. No, and I, I'm i not going to hit that this week either. Oh, so you're going to help me save my sponsors. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, you know, we talked about the Cowboys. This is kind of part two of uh, talking about some of the ca- real honest-to-goodness, not Hollywood or movie Cowboys. You mean they're not Lauren Green and Bonanza? Dressed to the nines and no dirt on their shirt? No. Oh. I'll be. You know, at least once a year, a cowboy drew the duty of what they call line riding. Yeah. Okay. Now, most large ranches were too big to be manned from their central buildings alone. Uh, almost like a little country, so to speak. They needed outposts. Uh, there was one ranch, for instance, that had outposts spout, spotted every six or eight miles around the 60-mile perimeter. Now, that's a big ranch. That's a big ranch. Yeah. Now, in the days before barbed wire, and even sometimes after that, the boss... Uh, uh, was a wire hater, you know, and uh, sometimes they cut fences. They, you know, barbed wire was uh, good and bad, I guess you could say. Well, when it was introduced, it brought a lot of ill feelings, and there was a lot of range wars over the, you know, the bringing up of barbed wire. Right, because the guys that usually run their cattle through yep, there yep. weren't able to. Yep. So, but anyway, these line riders patrolled between their stations, yep. and they formed a kind of a living fence, if you want to call it that, around the owner's range. Now, in 
addition to these efforts to prevent cattle from straying off the home grass, the line rider performed other chores like uh, getting the new calves away from their moms or uh, from the alkaline water, watching out for rustlers, uh, hunting for uh, and poisoning wolves, mountain lions, and... Oh, my goodness. You don't mean to tell me they actually killed wolves? No, I think they caged them and I took see. them I see. Yeah, took them to the Greenies in California. <laughs> right. But, in fact, they were thought that even eagles were prone to attack a small calf. I believe that. On occasion. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that could happen. Yeah. But the line rider was also expected to take uh, note of pasture conditions for the boss for his information. And on a ranch located near a railroad... A, hand, a guy would be assigned to patrol the tracks, chasing cattle off of the right-of-way, and keeping a record of the cows that were run down and hit by the train so that they could uh, give an itemized bill to the railroad. See, I told you cows were dumb. <laughs> so they did get reimbursed for those cows, I guess. Yeah. So, anyway, life at the line camps was even more primitive than the lowliest bunkhouse, and we talked about that last week. Uh, in fact, such camps consisted of no more than a dugout stra- uh, scratched from the side of a hill. When a man was alone in a crude dwelling for weeks at a time, you can imagine the boredom had to be overwhelming. You know, stop right there because, you know, if there's one or two guys all winter long in a line shack, one of them ain't coming out alive. <laughs> I'm going to make you a lot of them. Talk about that. <laughs> anyway, there's one particular uh, veteran hand. Uh, he remembered a cowboy who spent an entire winter alone in a shack, and it was papered with old newspapers and farm journals. Yeah. So the man read the north side of the of the shack. He read the south and east and west walls and was just getting ready to start on the ceiling when spring broke. Oh, my goodness. But what else sakes. do you do? Yeah, really. Uh, in fact, other hands, uh, uh, they'd read the labels on tomato or condensed milk cans. Now, <clears throat> you talk about being together. You know, wait a minute, though. It's surprising a lot of people that did this job. They weren't absolutely Looney Tunes because staying in a building after you've been out during the day in a blizzard or something, making sure that all the calves were in pretty good shape, et cetera, mothered up, et cetera. Woo! Yeah. All night in the dark in that room? Well, there's a story told that when uh, there were two men that were in a line camp for a long period, and they, you know, this could get pretty terrible on each other's nerves. Oh, uh, you obviously. think? Now, Can you imagine you and I in a line shack? Neither one of us would make it out alive. <laughs> That's right. Well, this story says that uh, there were a pair in a lonely camp, and one night they heard bellowing noises in the night. Yeah. So they're laying there in the dark. One of them suggested, bull. The other said, sounds like an old steer to me. Not another word was spoken, and the two went to bed. The next morning, one of the cowboys started packing up his horse, leaving. Asked his companion. Yes, came the answer. Too much arguing. Are you serious? Yeah. Because one said bull. One said steer. <laughs> steer. <laughs> Too much arguing. Not going to stick around. Independent lot, weren't they? <laughs> they were. Yeah. You know, but the slowest time around a ranch was winter, and by late November, two of every three ranch hands were laid off until the workload picked up again in the spring. Wow. And most of these uh, unemployed guys. Uh, uh, housed up with buddies in town and took temporary jobs like bartending or blacksmithing, just, you know, whatever to get through the winter. Yep. But for those who remained on the ranch, the most important job was the grueling business of going out from time to time to be sure that cattle were not starving or freezing to death or both. Now, cattle are not the smartest animal out there. Oh, my goodness. You don't uh, imagine. And But they had a stubborn, kind of mindless tendency to stand shivering and hungry in deep snow rather than trying to find food. Yeah. So bundled in their bulky buffalo coats, these men would ride out and on the trails to the hillsides and where the wind had blown snow off the grass, uh, they'd turn and drive the cattle to these spots yeah. where the snow had been cleared off. And the cowboys also had to chop through snow, crust, and ice so the cattle could drink because they the cattle did not uh, eat snow for water. For, some animals do, I guess, yeah. but... Uh, um, now, I, I read a story, it's not in this one today, but uh, where some cowboys were out and it got so cold, their horses froze right 
Oh, right under them. You know, the thing that surprises me back in those days, we're talking 150, 160 years ago, they didn't have the insulated boots. They didn't have the warm coats. They didn't have the Carhartt clothing. They didn't have the warm gloves. It's amazing to me, especially their feet, that yeah. they didn't have more frostbite and lose more cowboys because of frostbite. Yeah, and who knows? I, I'm sure that had to have happened. Oh, my Especially goodness. if the guy got lost, you know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But one wintertime assignment did offer some excitement and even reward. In cold months when the pickings were slim among natural game on the range, wolves became a particularly bold in, uh, st- in stalking after the cows. Yeah. And moving in packs, they would disable a cow by severing the hamstring in his hind leg. Yep. Then they'd move in to finish it off. Um, one guy was hired by a ranch in Texas to shoot wolves at a salary of $35 a month plus five bucks, five dollars uh, bounty offered uh, by the county governor, government. Uh, the rancher, in addition, paid him with food, four to eight horses, two rifles, a Colt 45, and all the ammunition he needed. Yep. So, uh, for the most part, however, the wintertime chores of the cowboy were, it was kind of drudgery, you know? I mean, hauling firewood and uh, dragging tree stumps. Yeah, with, but they uh, were looking forward to those three square meals a day. And they, that's exactly right. Because yep. that's the only thing they had coming in. That's right. But, uh, you know, they hung in there and did this tedious work until spring came. And Now, especially in the north, the annual rite of the spring was the roundup. Yep, big roundup. Big roundup. And yeah. now, the, and this might be a good place to stop, Zeb, if you want to. I want to do a commercial, but let me say something. I think one of the greatest movies that was ever produced, and the original was good, but I don't think it was good as the remake, was the movie Marty Walsh. Marty Walsh originally was uh, starring Lee Marvin as Marty Walsh. And then the remake was with Tom Selleck. And I thought the remake was better better of the actual cowboy's life on the ranches back in those days. And I thought Tom Selleck sold it much better than Lee Marvin did. It was a good movie. I'll have to look that one up. Look it up. It's excellent. By the way, we're going to talk a little bit about windows and upgrade your windows right now at Minicasha Sales. They've got the western windows that will save on your heating and cooling bills. Zach and the rest of the crew can help you with your lumber and everything, all your carpet needs. I mean, they are so good at Minicasha Sales. Nice people, too. Stop in, visit with them, tell them what you need, tell them what your needs are. They can help you at 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport, or give them a call, 878-2091. Zach and the rest of the crew at Minicasha Sales, bringing you Dr. History. Okay, the you know especially like I said in the north the annual rite of spring roundup, and of course this is where all the cowboys got together. They scoured the range and then sorted out the cattle yep. that had wandered and intermingled during the winter. Now in the southwest, uh, with it being dry and kind of sparse, uh, the cattle tended to group themselves around water holes, and they usually didn't stray that far yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, now, however, in the north, uh, because of the plains the way it was. Uh, it was overstocked, it was overgrazed, cattle were forced to cross divides and mix with other herds and to find new grass and water. And uh, anyway, in that vast land, you know, a roundup required planning, almost like a military campaign. Absolutely. So, in fact, in 1886, it came to pass that there were uh, 175 members of the Montana Stock Growers Association. They gathered in Miles City and Montana Territory uh, to map out that spring's roundup. Um, also, on hand that there was a military band from a nearby fort which led a parade uh, 100 cowboys going down the street a big this big celebration yeah, almost yeah Throwing what town hat. was that in in Montana Ma- Mile City Ma- oh, there you go you right been there. there been there and spent two weeks there one night <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so here's the cowboys, you know, in this parade. They're throwing their hats in the air. They're showing off their new clothes that yep. they bought. Yep. Uh, quite a festive atmosphere, uh, but it was a serious affair. Um, so anyway, in an area as big as Pennsylvania, huge area, oh, yeah. all these cattle had to be gathered up. Uh, and actually for a total of more than one million head of cows all out there on the range. Uh, so at all as at all these roundups, even the smallest, these animals had to be gathered up. Uh, next, uh, you know, they'd pull in the new calves and count them and brand them. And at the same time, the males were brought in and castrated and, and uh, dehorned if necessary. Um, 
and to help them gain weight, uh, you know, the uh, uh, castration and uh, dehorning actually helped them to gain weight. Yeah. So, but they had to be doctored. Uh, some of the healthy ones, uh, like they were dehorned. Uh, finally, all the strayed cattle would be separated into individual groups and driven home, which was a huge job. There were some 4,000 different recorded brands yeah, and mixed in that. There were a lot of tensions during that time because so and so saying that so-and-so got their calves and so-and-so says no you got mine and, and that type of thing and then there was also the guys who would try to change a brand oh my goodness you know, yes with so, the old running irons yes yeah, yeah but this one particular area by mile city they broke it up into 17 areas one area was 130 miles by 30 miles oh my and those cowboys had to go through that whole thing um, anyway but uh, anyway, the, for three days while waiting for uh, latecomers, the cowboys would amuse themselves by racing horses or one thing or another. And anyway, they finally got headed out, and uh, they knew for at least the next six weeks they would never get enough sleep, and they were right. So in the early morning of the next day, the cook went around, woke everybody up, and got them moving and said, come on, boys, we're headed out, and that's what they did. And the cook, you never have really explained that too much, but I know that in future programs, the cook, he was almost like God. Everybody looked up to a good cook. And you did not want to get on his bad side. Never. Because you may not know what's in that soup. It happened in Monty Walsh, the movie, too. Did it? Uh, have you ever heard x Lax? <laughs> yeah, I sure have. Okay, so did they. <laughs> okay. So here we are. These cowboys are getting up every day at 3.30 in the morning. They each selected uh, from his string of six horses uh, uh, an animal that they felt was in uh, could endure the day, you know, and they would use that horse all morning, and as the sun came up, they would head out, and uh, anyway, the cowboys often logged 35 miles just in the morning. Oh, yeah. And they would come back in, uh, they would uh, uh, change horses, they were, of course, starving, and they would have a great meal. Now, according to an unwritten law, uh, a rancher killed one of his own beeves uh, with the operation, um, and that was considered good luck. Mm-hmm. And the chuck wagon guy, he'd the cook, he'd cook up a barbecue, this fresh beef, uh, which had to be had to be very very good. I would think. Oh, I'll tell you, cowboys in in old days and today, they always look forward to fresh biscuits. Yeah. Well, and uh, the cook made uh, an assortment of puddings and oh. pies. I mean, that, that would have been a good meal. Oh. So then, the, after the meal, they they would choose uh, another horse. Now, this is uh, I find this interesting. The uh, a specially trained horse for roping, separating, or cutting certain cattle from yep. the main herd. Yep. Uh, the best cutting horses were so alert, and you've seen pictures of these and seen these guys in action. The best horses were so alert and intelligent that their riders, a lot of times, just let the reins go. And, uh, in fact, a mounted man would often drop the reins uh, to the saddle horn and steer with his knees alone. Well, we were in the cutting horse business for a while, my son, my wife, and myself, and there is nothing, and I, I, I love to rope, but there's nothing like riding a good cutting horse. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, as soon as the rider showed the horse what calf or steer he wanted to cut out of the herd, the horse's ears would begin to twitch, his eyes would be glued on that animal, and uh, he would cut that cow out and of course uh, then he would uh, the cowboy could rope the the cow and bring it over drag it over to where it's going to be worked on with Brandon and one thing or another so but whatever a calf or unbranded steer got unreasonably close to the fire, uh, the pursuing cowboy uh, he was using his rope to capture this, and a loop carelessly thrown around the, and wrapped around the saddle horn, you might be losing a thumb or a finger or both. Well, that's true today, though. I it mean, is. anybody that ropes uh, on a frequent basis. Now, I broke all my fingers. See that little finger right there? <laughs> yeah. That's been caught in a dally, too. And it's the easiest way in the world to start to learn to eat with your other hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that happened back then. It still happens oh, today. Oh, absolutely. So, well, toward the end of the afternoon, the chuck wagon would head off to a night camp, and after the branding was finished, the crew and the cattle followed, and after a nice, fine meal of the day, uh, a few unlucky riders prepared to guard the herds and shifts throughout the night while the rest of the crew bedded down. Now, before turning in for the night, 
and I didn't know this, but the cook pointed the tongue of the chuck wagon yep, at the North Star toward the North Star. Yep. And this gave the trail boss a sure compass heading in the morning. Yep, that's w- right. Which direction that's to go? That's right. That was that was something that you'd read in any book that had any merit whatsoever. They always did that. Yeah. Now the cowboys, of course, they were exhausted after spending fifteen or more hours in the saddle. Sleep didn't come real easily. They were on the hard ground. Uh, a lot of times, all they had was a quilt. Uh, they tossed and turned, and if they were near any kind of water, the mosquitoes would just about eat them up. Oh yeah, just about eat them up. Either that, or in the Southwest, a lot of times they'd wake up in the morning and they had a visitor in their bedroll, <laughs> like and he sometimes of- rattled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, that was that was a little scary. Yeah. What uh, else are you going to tell me about? Well, uh, I'm trying to find it. Give me a minute. <laughs> are you not organized I'm today? organized. I'm just... Uh, okay, go ahead. I was just going to talk a little bit about the saddle. Oh, okay. I mean, the, you know, the single most important piece of equipment uh, that the cowboy was, was most concerned was his saddle. Right. I mean, for months at a time, he sat in it all day and sometimes half the night. And when he finally laid down at night to rest at the end of the day, uh, he used the saddle as a pillow. That's right. And uh, so indispensable was this to his life and life livelihood that the phrase he sold his saddle came to mean that a cowboy was finished yep. he was done he was done toast kind of like kicking the bucket i guess yep. i don't know there it is but uh anyway unlike the horse which was supplied by the employer the saddle was the cowboy's own personal property and they'd cost they could be expensive uh cost a guy a month's pay for a for a saddle yeah. and uh, but it would work for 30 years yeah. you know a good saddle if they took care of them yeah yeah but the western saddle actually evolved on the plains uh they think it came from the Spanish conquistadors. That's exactly right. Vaqueros. Yeah. The American cowboy designed a lot of his equipment from the Spanish vaqueros. Right. Or the Mexican vaqueros. And and these saddles sometimes weighed, weighed 40 pounds. Now, the old ones, and I didn't realize this, some of them were uh, covered with a brocaded silk velvet. I've got a picture of one of those, and you know what I ought to do? I've got a picture of all the old equipment from the Old West. Yeah. I ought to get that out for you sometime. Now, don't ask me to just walk to the <laughs> shelf and get it because you can see my wide array That's of shelves. Right. Yes, and v- well organized. Thank you very much. But anyway, in closing, I know we're running out of time, but uh, uh, the cowboy actually changed that old, s- the, the Spanish saddle, yeah. so that the cannel and the and the saddle horn were a little more usable, and then they, instead of using that, uh, uh, the uh, silk or the velvet, they used uh, leather right. to, to cover right. it. But, uh, you know, a carefully crafted, uh, a good saddle I know when I was, uh, was younger, my first saddle that I bought, uh, the first time I tried it, it was the most miserable, uncomfortable, worst saddle I'd ever sat in. But uh, my wife had Bob Severe make me a custom-made saddle. Old Severely! And I could sit in that saddle all day long. I'll tell you, he loves did. to hear that kind of a testimonial. <laughs> He's got his ears next to the radio right now. Hello, Severely! Well, now the other thing, you know, a poor saddle could cause saddle sores on the horse. Yeah. And if you had a good saddle... You could go all day long, and it fit the, the horse the way it was supposed well, to. Well, not every saddle is going to fit every horse. That's true. That's true. And not every butt's going to fit every saddle. <laughs> that's that's a true statement, too. That's why you need a custom-made saddle. There you go. To y- you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's do this again next week. Only we, let's talk a little bit more about maybe the food, and I don't care whatever you want to talk about okay. hygiene or which was there wasn't much. <laughs> you didn't have to wash your they hands before you bath when they crossed the river. That's right, or a good rainstorm. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. uh, that was good, Doc. I always appreciate you. And uh, really, what were you planning on next week? You know, I. I, I may go another session with the Cowboys. I'll just yeah. have to see what I can come up with. Some of the movies came fairly close to what the Cowboy life was like. And now I'll go back to Monty Walsh. I thought they really did a good job uh, portraying the loneliness and portraying the living together in a bunkhouse and the fights and the uh, some of the Cowboys turned to be wrestlers, which they yeah. did in real life, and how they had to be dealt with. I mean, it wasn't exactly all peaches and cream and all this 
legend. It yeah. was kind of serious stuff. Now, one thing I have read about Tom Selleck is when he did a Western movie, he wanted everything exactly in, in yep. period costume, from the saddles to the gear to he the did. everything. He did. And uh, he is very demanding on that, and I respect him for that, because yeah. it's not a Bonanza TV show. It is not. There you go. God bless you. Dr. History, every week right here on Zeb at the Ranch, and brought to you by Minicash Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. Doc, excellent job today. Thank Thanks, Zeb. You. you have a good day. I will. Hey, before we uh, turn it loose over to our main studios, I want to remember and remind you that we're going to have the uh, Denny's Football High School Game of the Week again on Thursday. You can get registered, pick the winning team and the closest to the final score, and you might win a free Grand Slam breakfast from Denny's at 611 Overland in Burley. It is delicious. Right now, let's send it back to our main studios. I'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, thank you much. Welcome back to our last half hour, Zeb at the Ranch. And uh, I enjoy Dr. History on Tuesdays. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate that. Always interesting and informative. We're going to have our next guest with us on the program momentarily. Stand by, but don't forget get first and foremost uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Don't forget, call 678-0459 Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox saving you money. You get a hold of them today. And uh, we also want to remind you about Red's Trading Post in Twin Falls. My goodness, in Old Town Twin Falls since 1936. Wow. 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls with the large selection of firearms from Browning, Beretta, Weatherby, Ruger, Benally, Smith & Wesson, and Winchester. All the ammo, all the accessories. And you know what? All the people to help you and the knowledge to make sure that you're getting the right gun for the right purpose. They know. These folks are really good at Reg Trading Post. 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Let's go to the phone line right now and say good morning to a lovely lady and she is the executive director of the Concerned Christians for America. I am very fortunate to have her on this program. Brooke McGowan, how are you? Good morning, Zeb. It's wonderful to be here. Well, it's nice. It's very nice to have you on the program. Brooke, before we get started, why don't you tell us a little background of the Concerned Christians for America? What is your group trying to do and accomplish? Thank you for asking. Um, Concerned Christians for America, we're trying to just be exactly what we sound like. We are concerned Christians, and we, we, we're holding a mirror up to legislature and up to the United States to really ask for their help and, and tell them, you know, we want to tell legislators, look, if you're following this principle, if you call yourself a Christian, this is how you should be voting, and this is why, you know, we're unhappy with the way things are going. Um, we're just a, we're just a conglomerate of people who are concerned, and you know it's very obvious we are on the wrong path. So uh, it's time that Christians lock arms, and we've learned that once once courage is out there, then other people feel the same strength, and get and, and courage is contagious. So let me ask let me ask you, Brooke, are you on a speaker phone or a handheld phone? I'm on a headset. Uh, is there a way you could go directly into the direct line phone? The headset's not working as good, and we're having a little trouble. It's wavering a little bit. If there's a possibility you could switch directly to the phone, I would really appreciate that. Are you there? Can you hear me, Zeb? Oh, that's much better. Much better. Thank you so much. Uh, Brooke, sure. r- right now, I am very concerned as to what's happening in this country. And on this program, I'm very blunt, and I don't try to be politically correct. I see Christianity being pushed into the background. I see Christianity being condemned. I see the surgence of Muslims and the ideology of Islam coming to the forefront. I see people catering to those folks. I see Christianity being laughed at and 
and uh, almost uh, in a negative fashion being issued the door. Am I wrong in what I'm seeing and feeling? No, sir, not at all. We, we all feel that. We, we're recognizing that we've capitulated far too long to the ideology of Islam or just or just opening our borders. We can see that currently. I mean, you look in Michigan, we've got Dearborn and other areas of, of Tennessee that, you know, are practically Sharia areas. They're, they're not exactly said that, but that's what we're witnessing. Um, you know, we, we are absolutely under fire. This is a cold civil war, and it is between Islam and our nation, which is founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Uh, Brooke, let me tell you what's happening here, and I'd like you to respond to it. Right now, thanks to the College of Southern Idaho and their refugee program, and an agreement with the federal government, and also really pushed and promoted by our local Times News newspaper, uh, they're going to be bringing in many, many more Syrian Muslim refugees. And we're being told, oh, don't worry. Oh, don't worry about them. They've all been vetted. They're going to be great neighbors. I am worried. I'm very concerned. Our own president has said that in the next two years, he wants to open the floodgates of at least 200,000 of these people coming in. And I see major problems. What are your thoughts? Zev, you are right on the target there. Um, we are concerned watching these videos. I know you've seen them. Uh, these refugees, you know, we're watching the march of the caliphate across Europe. And it's making its way to our shores, as announced by Secretary Kerry and Obama. Um, here's my question. Certainly we are concerned about taking care of the poor of the world. That's what James says, that true religion is taking care of orphans and widows. Where are the orphans and widows? Or... Also, where are the women and children in this march? What we see, if you pay attention to the videos that you're not seeing on the mainstream media, you'll see able-bodied freedom fighters, mid-20s, late teens, 30-year-old men, very capable of staying in their country and fighting for their own rights or fighting for their own homes, but they're not doing that. They've left, and they don't have women and children with them. Where are the elderly? When you see refugees from World War II, those are the elderly that are getting out of harm's way. We're not seeing that today. This is an invasion, and we have to call it what it is. Absolutely. When you hear the move a cow on my program, it means that we have a telephone call and a caller. Call her real quick with your question for Brooke McGowan. Go ahead, please. Look, uh, in 2012 election, uh, uh, I forget what percentage of the Christian community decided not to vote, and it was 54 million Christians who decided that for some reason they didn't need to do the distasteful thing of voting. And now, because we re-elected Obama, we, and the policies that he's had have created this refugee problem. What have we got to do to get the, the uh, Christians to vote? Thank you. All right. Brooke, respond to that, please. Yes, thanks for that question. That is the problem of our day. A lot of Christians sit back on their blessed assurances and just say, well, Jesus is coming and here comes the rapture. We're watching the end of days. We were told by Christ to occupy until he comes. That means to do the work. That means to speak the truth. That means to do exactly what we're doing today through our group, and that's educating others, going to churches, talking to people, and saying, if we don't vote, we are continually waving the white flag. That's all we've done so far. And if we continue to wave, wave the white flag, I mean, we're just giving up. That's not what Christ has called us to do. Well, Brooke, let me say this, and I think you and I are going to be on the same page on this. Over, I'm an old man. I'm 67 years old. But I have seen a transition in the church from the pulpit that I don't like. I think our pastors have taken the easy way. I think our pastors and church leaders have taken the way of least resistance. I think they didn't want to offend anyone. I think they've taken the path of political correctness. And I think they're leading us down the path to hell in a lot of cases because they're not standing up and telling their congregate members really what's going on. You're so right, Zeb. You have to find a congregation and a pastor and leadership that's not capitulating to political correctness. That's what's strangling us inside even the churches. For many years, I was involved in the pro-life movement so far as standing in front of abortion mills and preaching on a loudspeaker. And many churches reject that 
thought. They don't want that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm too controversial if you do that. Excuse me. If we're not standing up for the most, uh, the most vulnerable, why are we, you know, even doing anything? We have to stand up for the most vulnerable. We have to vote. We've got to get out of this idea that we, that politics and religion do not mix. That is a, lie from the pit of hell <laughs> we are capitulating and surrendering when we do not get involved in the political process civilly there is another being that i'm very concerned about and i'm not trying to denigrate him i'm not trying to denigrate any religion or aspects of any religion but i am extremely concerned about this pope francis for more reasons than one number one i find him to be very liberal number two i find him to be be very political in the event that he's pushing for a climate change or a uh, global warming issue that I don't think he's really informed about. And I think also that he's really pushing, in some respects, a welcoming with open arms of the gay and lesbian community. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong at all, Zeb, and, and there are many reasons, and you've listed out many of them, why this Pope gives us pause. Uh, in addition to those issues, he's also in support of the Iran deal. Now, Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map, and the U.S. is next. He said in his June 18th encyclical that climate change is the moral issue of our time. In fact, he says, if we destroy creation, creation will destroy us. That's not at all biblical. The Word of God says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That's right. Climate change is a hoax. Any, most scientists even declare so. Many have had to leave the field because they are ran out of the industry by speaking the truth. My question to the Pope is, wouldn't the greatest moral issue of our time be something more akin to the slaughter of Christians in the Middle East or worldwide Islamic terrorism, Paris shootings, Chattanooga shootings, the Paris train attempt, Kenyan mall shootings, the woman losing her head here in Oklahoma City, or lone wolf attacks of terror that occur worldwide? Uh, Iran having nuclear capabilities with an ICBM, that sounds to me like a moral issue of our day. You know, we have developed into, and I'll go back and revert back to what I said a few moments ago, a, a politically correct society to where thou shalt not say this, thou shalt not believe that, thou shalt not do whatever, and if you are, you're ostracized as a bigot and a hate monger by some of these liberal groups. Well, now it's got to the point where shows like mine are being deemed unnecessary, and they're going to do all they can to try to shut us down, either by going through our sponsors, etc., and the American public actually is to blame because they've been so blasé, so naive into thinking that all's going to go great with the sunrise tomorrow morning. And it's changing day by day, hour by hour. We're seeing more control factors come in, not only in government, but also within the churches themselves. You're right. And not only are we, you know, so busy with, with not paying attention, but... Like for my husband, he works 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. I mean, it's a six-day work week. So people are busy. They're spinning their wheels. They're having trouble staying ahead of the game. We are, you know, 6.5% less with our median income than we were in 2007 on a whole in the United States. Economic issues and tax uh, reform, all these things are why we're looking at presidential candidates in the way we are. And that's why somebody like Donald Trump has been surging in the polls because we see, you know, many see Donald Trump as someone who can be an economic hero to our country. Um, it's, it's a scary time, and if the churches don't get involved and don't stand up and say something, then shows like yours will continue to be under arrest. I mean, you're going to continue to have the onslaught. But we have to stand together. You know, Brooke, whether it's Hollywood and the sleaze and the slime that comes out of Hollywood, or whether it's politics itself with the sleaze and the slime that is reigning supreme in, in politics, with uh, legislators that have uh, maybe made millions and millions with some shady deals, or like this Iranian nuclear deal that is absolutely going to be a devastation for mankind. As Christians, why are we not standing up and making a ruckus? Why are we sitting back like sponges and just taking it all in? I can't understand why people aren't up in arms. Well, I think people are scared, Deb. You know, we get shut down when we make comments on even Facebook or social media. The um, the long knives are out. 
the, the, the enemy of our, uh, of our nation and of our standards is clear and, and is uh, out there and stabbing at us. So people just get afraid, you know. It's, it's, um, I can't tell you how many death threats I've gotten. There have been times that I've gone into a deep hole and, and have shut down because, you know, they, they try to scare us. But what we have to remember is that Christ stands with us. We have to speak truth to darkness. We have to be the light and salt to the world and not be, fear, not be afraid. Jesus said, I, will, I have shown you these things so that you might overcome. I have overcome the world, and you will. So we have to remember that and cling to our faith and cling to one another. You know, I... Together. And, um, and fight this evil. It's I, obviously a spiritual warfare that's happening currently. I agree with everything you said, and it, it takes people to get involved. It takes people to go to church on Sunday and question why the pastor or the minister or the church leader isn't saying or doing something to get the community involved. It takes parents to get involved in their school system with some of the sleaze that's going through our school systems. I just don't understand why we have become so subservient to the evil in this world and why we aren't taking a brand new pair of boots and stomping it out. Absolutely. You know, we really need to be teaching um, about the tenets of Islam, too, because as we see the march coming over and the invasion, we have to tell others, and we're doing it on social media, but we also need to just do it in our homes and in our churches and our Bible groups, whatever. But teach the tenet of Takiya, because while we're seeing currently on the news, everybody talking about Ben Carson, what he said about a Muslim being president, We've got, to, we've got to be taught and teach others about the Islamic doctrine of Takiyah, which is deception, which there are three stages of jihad, and currently they are at such low numbers right now that they're not in the position of power. But they come in, like, smiling and, and being your friend, using their, our laws to come into our, our land and infiltrate, eventually... And, and not every Muslim, don't get me wrong, Christ is calling Muslims out of their darkness left and right. He is speaking to them in their dreams. He is coming to them and calling them out of the depth, out of the death of Islam and calling them to him. And that is awesome. And I don't wish for, uh, you know, I don't wish for Islam and, and, my, and Muslims, my Muslim neighbors and Muslim friends, any ill will. I want them to come to Christ. Uh, so, so that is our goal. We have to teach about the deception, though, of Takiyah, because that's where we are right now. That's why we see the schools being infiltrated the way they are. Why our, you know, why the news is telling us it's crazy to say a Muslim shouldn't be president. That's Takiyah. That's deception. We have to learn the truth about the tenets of Islam. And and teach our children when something comes like that to you at school, that is deceptive. You know, get people involved in school boards. You know, if we don't change at our local levels, we can't expect any change at the hierarchy at, at, at the federal level. Yeah, absolutely, we have to be commissioners. We have to be school board members. We have to be on the town council. We have to pay attention to what's coming into our communities. We have to be able to say no to it and be strong and stand together. We're we're we're, we're such you know we're such individualists now in America. We don't even go out on our front porches anymore and talk to our neighbors we're hidden away we have to get out of that mindset we have to lock arms with our community with our neighbors with our you know our, our churches and and stand up for this this is the time has come the time has passed us as you as you said you said Zeb. the time has already passed we've got to stand together you know one last thing and i've got about two minutes left in this segment brooke but uh we are seeing a transition of philosophy faith and moral values in this country for the negative when you look at the videos of the planned parenthoods and you look at the absolute not caring for the welfare of our young and you listen to these doctors and i don't know how in the world they could ever keep the Hippocratic Oath up on their wall. I mean, this insidious Planned Parenthood and what's happening with these videos and no value of life. We really are a country that's uh, doomed if we don't change our ways. We are. You're so right. You know, if we don't live and walk in repentance, because that's clearly where we are. We're, we're so far gone now. If we look at the mainstream, like you say, playing, what's happened with Planned Parenthood, the fact that many people are coming out and everybody's saying, oh, those are doctors, those are edited. Uh, you can't really edit a baby in its pie dish with his leg wiggling. That is pretty clear. That's not edited. That's not fake. That's real. That's what their religion of Planned Parenthood and abortion, standing with it. Right now we're seeing the number one, tw number one hashtag on Twitter is shout your abortion. So people are reveling in their murderous act of killing their infant or killing their child. It's, it's sick and it's 
so evident of what happens. Here's the thing about the nature. What's happening in the spiritual realm is happening on the natural realm. So we see the spirit. We can tell that the, their, you know, evil spirits are now at their wit's end. They're coming to the end of time, and they recognize it, and they are battling, and we are battling the same thing on the earth. Absolutely. And on our knees. Absolutely. Uh, Brooke, I wish I had more time, and i got to have you back in the future. You did a wonderful job, and I just want to say thank you to the Executive Director of Concerned Christians for America, Brooke McGowan. Please consent to come back in the future, and I'll look forward to that time. I will. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Zeb. Thank you very much. A uh, very interesting lady, and I agree with every single thing she said. We've got to get involved. We've got to take this country back with the moral values that it was founded upon. Whew, before it's too late, if it's not already. I know Wheels is over at the station, and he's saying, we've got a weather forecast to get in. Yes, we do. And the weather is brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657, the number. And don't forget, they are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Oh, my goodness, the ribeye steaks, the New York strips, the ground beef, the brats. Oh, it's delicious. You're going to love it. Remember, 324-7657, Scarrow's meets here now gina with the weather here's your weather for this tuesday september 22nd absolutely beautiful looks like this high pressure system is going to be sticking around at least until we get to the weekend sunny skies for today high of 84 tonight low of 50 tomorrow pretty much the same as today sunny skies high of 81 with an overnight low of 48 back up to 86 for thursday friday possible high of 87 85 for Saturday and could be dipping down into the upper 70s for Sunday. Sunset tonight is at 732. That's your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Uh, Gina, thank you very much. Brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats over in Jerome, 331 North Road. And the number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Absolutely. Hey, by the way, don't forget, uh, 97th Annual Old Settlers Dinner coming up this Saturday, September 26th at the Rupert Elks Lodge in Rupert. Dinner at 12 noon. Turkey and all the fixings along with the cobbler dessert. Going to be delicious. And don't forget then the program starts at 1 o'clock with the life and times of Artie Tyler featuring his son Bob Tyler with Gary Shoresman as the host. It's going to be ripping good fun. Don't forget call for reservations Gary Shoresman at 436-3982 this Saturday the Old Settlers Dinner. Don't miss it. What have we got cooking on tomorrow's program? Um, let me take a look here. We've got uh, open forum naturally in the morning, first hour, 8.06 to 9 o'clock. Then Dave Vigo will be on from Indianapolis, Indiana. Gail Trotter, lawyer and uh, just a fascinating lady to interview. Gail Trotter is going to be on at 9.30. Ryan is going to be on from Red's Trading Post talking about the gun rally. And then we've got Curtis Ellis talking about uh, taxes and all kinds of problems with our job force here in America. So that should be really interesting at 8.06 tomorrow morning starting time. Don't forget to all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh my goodness sakes, all the tires you need for all your driving needs like the Ultra Z900, this passenger car tire on sale right now and uh, 65 to 80,000 mile warranty depending on your driving. Woo! I'm telling you. And then also check out the Open Country HD on sale right now for your pickups and SUVs. The very best of brake service and front end alignment and shocks and struts and batteries. These folks really care and service always reigns supreme. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my old buddy Ray Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, absolutely the best. Albion is hosting Governor and Capital for the day, and it started about 10 o'clock this morning, and the Governor and Lieutenant Governor and all kinds of good folks are up at Albion right now answering your questions if you want to run over there and meet the Governor and find out what's going on. And... Uh, 
We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 8.06. Ride the horse for three hours. And I always want to remind everybody, the best of calls from you, the audience. Thank you very much. You're listening to Zeb at the Ranch. Make sure you're hearing everything. Contact Mount Harrison Audiology for a hearing screening. Call them today at 312-0957. Until tomorrow, Zeb at the Ranch, the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning.